Hey guys, just wanted to give y'all an update on what's been going on. We had um, a lot of great footage from the AC unit um, that we had coming out of Tulsa, but we lost it all. So uh, we did get a little bit of footage before we were before we delivered, um, and you'll see that in this video. But just wanted to give y'all an update on what's in, what's been going on. So we got the truck fixed. We were in Tulsa from Monday night to Thursday at 5 p.m. We finally. Um, we picked up a step deck a step deck trailer from Tulsa, the Tulsa Yard, and went to York International and picked up um, AC units. Brought them down to Laredo, um, and now we uh, we delivered delivered last night in Laredo, um, which basically we just dropped the trailer, and um, we now have a new load. Um, it's also AC units, and it is. Um, 23 something 2300 something miles um, going to New Hampshire it's got two stops in New Hampshire and then it goes back down to New York so um, that is what we're getting ready to do um, sorry it took so long to upload this video we were gonna do it um, day before yesterday but it didn't we lost it so um, that's what's been going on um, and the rest of this video will be um, securement on those AC units. here this unit we have seven units total this unit is only stacked one high I already took the securement off of this but I'll show you guys on the other side what it's secured like these units are stacked too high they're separated by wood so basically what you want to do is run your chain you hook your chain up they told you at or they told us at the plant if we have a circle circle oval hook your chain in the oval part and run it down go under a spool that's a spool and this is a stake pocket go under a spool go all the way under come back up on this side of the spool run all the way up to the next oval up here these units are light enough that you only secure the top and it holds the bottom down are, uh, AC units in general, they're very fragile. You don't throw chains or straps over the top. You'll collapse these. These are just shells. There's nothing in them besides uh, a little bit of non-flammable gas, probably free or something like that. I don't know exactly, but it's only a little bit in there. I don't have hazmat. As long as you have below a thousand pounds, you can haul this load. So, it's not much. Okay, go back over here to the security part. This is secure. This is a binder, a snap binder. We use snap binders here at Melton. It's probably really windy. Sorry, guys. Yeah. Um, we use snap binders here at Melton, not ratchet binders. So I'm gonna unwrap this so you guys can see what this looks like. All right, this is my snap binder. This is secure. This is tight. Opening up this snap binder, you're gonna do it with an open hand. This is gonna release the pressure on the load. Okay, now the load is unsecured. Take this binder off. I'll show you guys what it looks like before I put the binder on. After I ran my chain down, ran it down under the rubber on stuff, you pull your access kind of tight. Pull this part tight. You got them both tight, and you hook your binder on. Just, just an example. You would hook your binder on. Open the binder up and hook it down here. That's that's how you end up with what you saw before that. Before I took it apart. And you check your binders. You check to make sure it's tight enough. 
you put the chain, when you put this binder on the chain, and you go to close it, you want about a little less than a 90 degree angle. See right here? This triangle that forms right here when I hold this up, that's what you want. And you take your breaker bar, and you put it on the end of that handle, and you put pressure on it, and it secures the load. So, I'm taking off my screen. these units are very very frail so securing the top holes down the bottom we took this load 600 plus miles we didn't have it shift or walk on us this is a good securement job if i must say so <laughs> straps over the top damaging it you would hook it you have your circle circle oval hook it in there go under the rub rail go under these two spools under this stake pocket up back on top run it run it run it and keep running it come down under again one more snake and come back up top and you have your old wall over here to hook it to. And your binder goes in the middle of that. I'm gonna show you guys what this looks like. Always, always when you secure a load, uh, always when you secure a load, you're gonna wrap your, your access up around the binder handle because you don't want this to fly open going down the road. Hold your chain tight. Here's what it looks like before I wrapped it up. So again, releasing the pressure, open hand, put a little tension on it, open it up. It's a lot of pressure coming up off that binder, so you don't want to close your fingers around it. This is what the chain looked like before I put the binder on. I snaked the chain. I pull my axis together, make myself a little tight little area, put my binder on, and it puts tension. The binder is doing this. It's pulling it together. That way you're providing a pull on the unit. And you do that on both sides. So that's pretty much it, guys. It's pretty easy. The place we went to, they gave you a sheet on it uh, on how to secure it. Uh, I turned that sheet in. I don't have it to show you guys, but, uh, but there's never a doubt in your mind. Just ask a dock worker, and they'll help you. Yeah, they'll help you, or even even call the securement team. We haul a lot of these. These are these are one of Melton's main things that we haul a lot of AC units. So if you call the securement team or the safety team, they'll you tell them what kind of unit you have. Even send them a picture to the load securement team. They'll tell you exactly what I just told you guys on how to secure it. Hey guys, we're back here in Laredo at the terminal. We just um, delivered that last AC unit load and I went and talked to dispatch and got another load assigned. It's another AC unit load. This load is 2,356 miles, something like that. Yeah, it starts out here in Laredo and the final is in New York with two stops in New Hampshire. Um, I have a total of three pieces. Now, the smaller pieces on the front and the back, those have to be strapped. Well, the strongest part on the AC unit is the corners. See, there's wood up there protecting it. So Ivy put the straps over the top and put a half twist in them so they don't vibrate in the wind. And you do those just a few clicks down. Do not tighten those things. You will break them. Okay, so here. Just make sure when you're tightening to watch with every single click. Make sure that it's not bowing in or anything. Okay, so this big unit. I've taken my cotter pin off my hook right there and I've ran it through the, the, the linkage they have here. Um, this is the chaining point. So that means when you see this and we're not at a place that tells us how to secure these. We're in a terminal. Right, we're at a terminal. And safety isn't here on the weekends. So nobody's here to tell me how to do this. 
Well, I've been doing this a long time, and when you see these, that means obviously you're going to run chains. Do not throw straps over the top of it. Yeah. So, and you guys learn this with time with the more you flatbed. So here I have my binder, and I'm going to bind this. I've already snaked my chains the way I showed you guys in the previous video. Uh, snaked my chains through here. Now I have my slack right here. So I'm taking my binder, I'm making sure it's fully open, my binder's fully open. So I'm going to lay it up here, I'm going to bring my slack up to it, about right here. It's a, it's a guesstimation type game to see how, how much tension you're going to put on it. Okay, I'm running my slack with my hand, I'm pulling it tight with my hand. I know it's kind of hard to tell if I'm doing that on camera, but I'm pulling it as tight as I can with my hand. So. That's about as far as the binder will reach is that link right there. So, I lay it up here on the deck. Now I'm going to pull it. Now, look at this from this side. This is a little more than 90 degrees. That means it'll be too tight for me to try to bind it. So, I mean, you can try, but you got to be super strong to be able to. Right. You might accidentally break the um, welds on where the hooks go. Right. So... Well, they're wanna, screwed on this one. So you want to loosen it up by one link. I took the hook out. I took the chain out and I took the hook out and I'm moving it forward. I'm moving the binder forward. Now watch the difference. See how I can push it with my hand? That's about the angle you want it. Okay. So I'm going to leave it about, about this angle because when I bind it, I want my um, binder to be facing up because when we go to unload, I'm going to have to snap it back this way. Always keep that in mind. So here's here's my breaker bar again with my snap binder in. I'm gonna put it on. Go uh, <laughs> sorry, it always gets confusing. Yeah, it gets confusing, go, but go through and that little U will catch the handle. Make sure you're locked on. Okay. Now I'm coming back this way, keeping my hands, keeping my hands away from me because if the bar slips, I'm you're naturally going to do this with the bar, so you want to push it away if the bar slips. So I'm keeping my hands away from my face, and I'm binding it. I'm it. It snaps. Now, to me, that felt a little too loose where I can adjust it, but this will work. Feel the chain. I know you guys can't physically feel the chain, but it's not but you, moving. You can't move the chain, so that means that this is good. So for the sake of the video, I'll leave it like this. Maybe in transit, I'll fix it. So now you may yeah. ask, well, what do you do with that axis? Get you a bungee. Take your axis. Take it and make make a little uh, line like this with both both ends. Wrap it around the hand. Pull it. Wrap it around again. Depending on how much axis you have, just wrap it around. And one more time will be good. Right there. Take you a bungee. Just hook it on to whichever end link. And you can either go under the trailer or back to another link right here. Like, I'm going to hook it back to this link right here. And then that's it's like, secure. It's not going to go anywhere. Yeah, and that's, that's secure. It's not going to go anywhere. DOT requires you to have this, this binded because if this snaps open, now you have an unsecure load. But DOT requires this. And see, this is fine too. Even though I'm spinning it, this isn't isn't going to go anywhere. And the only reason it's moving like that is just because there's empty space under it. So there's, yeah. there's nothing really holding it. It's kind of suspended. Yeah. But it's not going to go anywhere. But as long as it's holding it, you know, as long as you can't move it right here, right. then that's what's holding it down. Right, exactly. So basically, and now see in transit, if it spins like this, I'm going to show you guys just, just a little trick. See this big U right here? Say this were to spin in transit and I needed to fix it. I would take the, the nipple end of my breaker bar, stick it in there, and you can twist these binders any way you need it to go. See how I can move it or anything like that while it's still bound. So that's just a little that's just a little tip and trick, but this is the load. And like I said, it has two stops. The final's in New York. Um, it has two stops in New Hampshire. Right, two stops in New Hampshire and the final's in New York. Then back down to New York. Right, and we're going to take pictures and stuff and this is a good example of the mileage we get here 2,300 some miles this is an average run this yeah. is a good run 
and some driving companies, this is an excellent ride. This is this out of the never world seen. to receive. It's this never seen. <laughs> so a good a good friend of ours and a subscriber, Lonnie, uh, me and him were talking and uh, we we're talking about the miles and stuff like that. So this would be a great load to show him. And Lonnie, when you watch the video, this is this is the load, and this is the load we're getting out of Laredo. So you know. It, uh, it all works out. Yeah, we got an AC load out of um, Tulsa, well, Norman, and then we got this AC load out of uh, Laredo, so you can typically tell we do a lot of AC loads here. Right. Um, and they're great because you don't have to tarp them. Obviously, you don't get tarp pay right. if you don't tarp, but um, it's but, much easier. But also with this load, if you if you look at it, I can't tell you my, my exact pay, but I get my mileage play pay, plus I get my two stop pay. I have two stops in this load. Yeah, so, so I get $25 that. for each stop. So that'd right. be a total of $50 on top of the mileage pay. Right. So there, there's my tarp pay right there because I get $50 tarp pay. So it all works out. Sorry about the, the, <laughs> the uh, uh, hey, you guys. Okay, guys. I just wanted to check show you guys this real quick what an example of a flagrant violation is the DOT if I were using this strap and I say I had it on the load like this and DOT stopped me to check it out they would put me out of service if you didn't have a strap to recover it or yeah redo it but depending on how the DOT man's feeling he could put me out of service you see that that's a fray in the strap now I don't know what caused this. Caused this? I got this strap in a repower, but um, from not using edge protection and putting this on a sharp load uh, could cause this. But this is this is just an example of a flagrant violation. What you don't want to have here at Melton. You want to inspect your straps. Make sure they're good. Make sure there's no uh, damage to them. Even here, a, a fray is about to start. Yeah, so, but you'll be able to see when you're actually putting the strap on the load. If you see, right. if you have a question as far as you know will this get me in trouble you right. should probably not use it you should right. probably just and, um, get yeah, a new strap if you, if you have to question it your best bet will be to take that strap off or that chain off if you have a broken link or or a messed up binder take it off and and uh, uh put a new one on there and you'll have plenty of them and just like now i'm at a terminal so i'm about to take this to the shop and trade it in for a good strap and they do whatever they want with these i guess i don't know but yeah, I'll there's get not going to be a, a question strap as far as right. what happened or um, right. whether or not you're actually going to get the strap they will give you a strap yeah they'll give you a strap and it, it doesn't cost you no money i could i could show up with 18 broken straps they would give me 18 back if not more to make sure i have extra yeah. but that's an exaggeration but um, this strap i'm going to walk over here and trade it in that's how simple the process is i just want to show you guys that if you guys are ever worried about your equipment 